In the previous two videos, we talked about how to really amp up the challenges when you're practicing alternate picking. This is super important because we're using a principle that is in play every time you see rapid progress. So you want to go back and watch the other videos in this series here. What we're going to do today is that we're going to put on some extra weight. We're going to go into the alternate picking gym and really put on some weight so we see some rapid growth. And the, the, the whole principle is just like when I started you know, uh, going to work, I started in a company that sold ads in a uh, phone book. It was way back in the 90s where we had phone books still. But that phone book only came out or was sent to people who were actually in the phone book. So they didn't get very little out of it. So it was a crappy job. Every time you sold something, you had kind of a bad conscience because it was, you know, you weren't proud of the product you sold. So you had, yeah, I sold an order and I feel really bad for the customer. So it was absolute a disaster and I hated it more and more until I had to quit because, of, you know, it was just terrible. But it taught me one thing, that if you want to become a very good salesperson, you don't want to go in and ooze your way into it. You want to take the worst kind of work you can possibly get and then deal with that. I'm not saying you should sell products you don't like, but you, will, you should amp up the process. If you are, you know, uh, human enough to do that, you can make explosive process in very little time because you have to really amp up. And because then I'm just lifting more weight. I'm just, you know, it's just going to be harder. You know, so what's that going to do to my progress? Well, when it's harder, you activate your brain on a whole new level. When you start practicing something that is way more challenging than what you're struggling with. You know, might, might be struggling with bar chords, might be struggling with rhythm, and we struggle, 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 we make very little progress. Well, try to make it twice as hard and then deal with that. And really, you know, your whole brain, your whole body is going to be activated because now we're really freaking, this is, right? So it grows. That's the principle. So go back and do the other challenges in the, in the previous video here um, before you do this one, because now it, it gets insane. So we talked about alternate picking and how we want to play two notes per string instead of three in order to, in, you know, increase the amount of string shifting we have in what we do. And how we don't want to do, you know, all six strings back and forth because it simply involves too many little details so the brain has a hard time of learning. So we want to keep it simple but super hard. What we do now is skip a string. And that's the only change here. And I recommend that you play something that sounds a little bit... Sounds a little bit beautiful. Uh, so, so if you have this, if you have this uh, pattern where you have the ninth fret on the G string and the twelfth fret, two notes there, you get like a C major triad arpeggio, and then we have that uh, the other notes, the eighth and twelfth uh, fret on the high E string. Now you have a little four note pattern here. Right, instead of a three note pattern, we can also make it a three notes per string pattern by putting in the tenth fret on the G string. And we can put in the tenth fret on the high E string. All right, so you can start by having three notes per string, but having a string skip in between. What does that do? It makes your string shifting super hard because before we just had to up to the next string, right? Now we have to go all the way up. So it increases and the brain is going to search for that string. It's going to be challenged in trying to hit it. It's going to be challenged in trying to keep the timing because we don't want to go... That's not, we want to have an even flow of notes. And that's the first exercise. You want to start with just having a ton of notes in between the string shift. Because now the swing shift is really hard, right? So you go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, right? That gives you, if you just play up and down like that, using alternate picking, starting with a downstroke, you're going to get outside string shifts, which are the easiest ones to do when you have a string in between. Right? And you want to amp that up, and you can do an exercise that says you start with an upstroke, then you get an, an inside string shift. Right? You get an inside string shift, and you can absolutely do it. You can absolutely do this. You can play this as fast as if you don't have a string in between. And if you can play this as fast when you don't have a string in between, 
then just think about what you do when you right when you don't have that string in between and you go down to the what you were struggling with before this really works so that's the first kind of it should go six up notes up and down and have a string in between secondly we can amp up that challenge and say let's just have two notes and go up and down no matter how you cut it like if you play these four notes up and down like nine 12 on the G, 8, 12 on the high E, and back again, you get inside string shift. Right? But um, if you play just four notes up and repeat, so you go, you also get inside string shift. If you turn it around and start with an upstroke, then you get inside string shift. It's just impossible not to end up there. Well, you get an outside first and an inside afterwards. If you go the other direction, I have inside and outside again. So that's what you want to do. And you might not be able to get it up to speed at the level you could do the whole thing because it's harder. But this is the key. Instead of saying, oh, this is super hard, this is almost impossible. No, it's not. What you do is you say, this is my normalcy now. This is just what's, you know, just imagine that you could never hit adjacent strings when you did alternate picking. That's the reality you want to live in. You want to totally discard of the old reality with three notes per string, only play adjacent strings, not have anything in between. Don't do two notes per string. When you do two notes per string, you use hammer-ons and pull-offs. That's the old world. Now... You pretend to live in a world where this is the only option. And then you do that for an extended period of time. Because you need to cook it. You need to stay there. You need to make it normal. That's the key. Make it normal that it's so much harder. So your whole brain, instead of thinking, oh, this is hard. Oh, <laughs> this is hard. You just say, this is the challenge. This is reality. Amp up. You know, live in this new world. And if it's normal suddenly, the brain will release all kinds of resources of learning, of insights, and, and really focus on it because I need to be at normal, right? I don't need to be sub-level here, so let's get to intermediate again if that's where you were, right? Once you start doing these things, you get, you get worse at playing guitar, right? Because it's harder. But you need, you need to have your normal standard of who you are as a guitar player be then you, you go down because it's harder. And then the whole mind just goes, hey, this is not, I sound like an idiot now. I sound like an amateur when I play. So let's get it up to par, right? And that's the energy we want. We want to have that, this is substandard. Do something about it. It's like waking up, you know, 100 pounds heavier than you were yesterday. Normally, you take it a little bit at a time, right, when you gain weight. But if you wake up the next day 50 pounds heavier, you're going to scream and shout and not eat anything for two months, right? It's going to be... Duh! And that's the, that's the reaction we want. We want to get out of that comfortable, yeah, I'm making progress, man. I've been playing for 10 years now. And as you know, little by little, you have to practice for a long time to be good. No, you don't. You do not have to practice for a long time. We have this, we have this idea of mastery as something, it's only attainable for the very few who has the persistence and self-discipline and the kind of, you know... <laughs> martial arts mindset of just uh, hanging in there, right? It's not how it is. It's not how it is. You need to break out of that mindset and really go, I can do this much faster by amping up and punching through because that activates a whole new level of learning. So remember these exercises. You can uh, you know, t save the video, whatever, as a link, and then you can look at the uh, tabs on screen and then do this for a week, do this for two weeks. Uh, create your own practice plan and then hit it. See you in the next video. We're going to use this practice principle everywhere. So be sure to, to tune in for the next video so we can complete this process. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.